following is a live broadcast of a Lone Star community radio program. Recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and Facebook.com slash IRLoneStar. For more information on this show, please visit our show page at IRLoneStar.com slash shows. To sponsor or donate to this program, visit our donate page at IRLoneStar.com slash donate. Or email us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or give us a call at 936-666-1084. Lone Star Community Radio production and broadcast is possible by folks like you. So sponsor and donate today. Howdy, howdy, everybody. This is Jared Sterrett, and you're listening to KZCC LP 106.1 Conroe and KZCW LP 104.5 in Conroe and worldwide at OurLoneStar.com. Good morning, and you are listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schussler. I'm your host. I'm a Silver Fox advisor as well as the founder of OneBestConsult.com. Appreciate you taking time to join us on today's program. And as you know, the weekly business hour is where all of Montgomery County comes to do business. In fact, now we have businesses throughout the world that join us every Monday morning to get the latest in business news, talk about ideas to improve their businesses, and be part of a conversation that we hope can make a difference in your business even today. We're broadcasting live this morning, as we do most mornings, from the studios of Lone Star Community Radio. This is the community radio station for Montgomery County, Texas, uh, right here in downtown Conroe, the county seat. We're here in their studios right here on Main Street. So a wonderful day falls upon us. The weather's changing. And I want to remind you that the show is being broadcast live. Uh, it's funny. I say that at the beginning of every show, and people forget, but it's simple. Just go to Facebook or YouTube, type in the Weekly Business Hour, come to the page, click, and you can watch us as well as listen to us. So we're live on Facebook and YouTube as I speak. And also a reminder, during the show, after the show at any time, drop me a line if you've got a question, if you have a comment about the show, even if you have a question about your own business, you've got a situation, an idea, something you want to bounce off, please send it to me. It's real simple. Just send it to email one, that's the number one, bestconsult at gmail.com. That's one, bestconsult at gmail.com. Well, now we're going to get into the show. And as I say almost every week, this is the special part. Well, it's the heart and soul. And that's where we bring people in from the business community, not just locally, but some throughout the United States. And today, we have an expert. From time to time, we'll bring those in. And we have an expert on digital marketing, which is a very appropriate topic, I believe, particularly right now, as we've gone through the COVID virus and businesses have some gone out of business, some are floundering, some are trying to get started again, and some have been very successful. And it's kind of interesting to go through and determine what's the difference. But digital marketing is a must have today, particularly today, so that you can get your business back up and running or bringing more success to it. So today, we're blessed to have Brett Rodriguez with us. He's a digital marketing specialist, digital marketing manager, and I've got to say this, Brett, it always twists my tongue, tiny giant web solutions. <laughs> web yeah. solutions. Mm-hmm. It's the tiny and then the giant. Yeah. It's just the mental picture. I just kind yeah. of freeze frame took, on it that. Took, it took me a second to get used to it, so you trust me. So, totally well, it's good. It. you got to repeat it 10 times yep. backwards, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Brett, thanks for so much for taking time to join us. I know you're busy. Uh, give us a little bit of background so folks know what your background is as we go through today and they'll understand better where you're coming from. For sure. Thanks for having me on too, by the way. It's great to be here. Great to come out and talk to you guys. Uh, I feel really honored to be considered an expert. Uh, I'm considering I'm not that old, um, but I have been in the industry for a while now and I feel like I have a lot to, to offer. So uh, just a little background on me. Um, I'm from uh, Splendora, Texas. I grew up born and not born and raised, but born and raised outside of Splendora, Texas, but grew up in Splendora. Um, went to college at Sam Houston State University where I got my degree in public relations and advertising. Um, worked in a few different marketing spaces. I've worked in church space. I've worked in media space. I've worked in uh, legal now too. Um, and now being a part of Tiny Giant Web Solutions for the past few months, um, I've worked in several different spaces from home services to small businesses, even doing more legal stuff. 
um, a lot of trade jobs, stuff like that. So I've gotten a lot of exposure this past uh, summer for, to a lot of different industries. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of a little brief background of what I'm doing. Well, you definitely have a lot of experience, five plus years of actually being in the workplace, plus that education. Mm -hmm. Sam Houston being one of, in my opinion, one of the finest colleges in America, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Uh, as, along with Lone Star here in, uh, in this Montgomery County, we have some great education opportunities for folks. Well, let's jump right in and talk about digital marketing. I mean, it's everywhere. We hear about it. Uh, we own a business. We hear about it, but we're not so sure. We don't want to take the time to learn how to punch this button or do this or that. Mm -hmm. And if you do dive off in that, you can drown for hours yep. just, just trying to understand what for you're sure. dealing with. If you would, though, Define digital marketing for us. Man, digital marketing, it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing to define and just put on one thing, But because I, I believe digital marketing is everything. It's, it's all around us. It's every day. You're exposed to so many different forms, especially with the age of social media, with uh, smartphones. Um, it's just everywhere. But I would say digital marketing more specifically is bringing the marketing to the consumer um, and to, to who you're marketing to. Um, it's you know online, it's uh, TV, all different stuff. Like That's digital marketing at, at its core. Um, people putting their message in front of their consumer and bringing it to them. So, you, know, you know, traditional marketing was more um, putting your putting your advertising out there and hoping people would see it, whether it was, you know, newspapers, magazines, billboards, stuff like that. But now it's where we're really bringing it to the consumer, putting it on your phones, putting it in front of you, putting it in movies and TV and stuff like that. Um, so that's that's pretty much what I would define digital marketing as, is it's online marketing, putting your business out there to, to try to hopefully put it in front of the consumer because we're just so saturated with everything. Um, it, it, it's more important than, every, and than ever to, to use digital marketing. You know, the thing that intrigues me about digital marketing as a small business owner and, and someone who works with small businesses now for 15 plus years is the fact that it's it's so different, this is my opinion, mm -hmm. so different from traditional, say, print advertising. For sure. uh, as far as uh, the ability and how people perceive it, it's still evolving. Mm -hmm. uh, the data, mm -hmm. understanding how it works. Uh, and part of that is there's always new ways to digitally market. There's new tools that come up. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were going to talk to someone about digital marketing, and I'm a small business owner, uh, and I really, if, I know it's there, but I don't, what would you try to tell me uh, that I need to know to get comfortable with the media? First off, I would, I would really, and this is a, a lot of the conversation I have on daily when I'm talking to new clients and even our current clients. We have a lot of small business owners, brick and mortar companies that, that all they ever ever known is traditional marketing, and all they've ever known is just the traditional way of doing small business, which is word of mouth. You know, your your networks, quote unquote. They probably don't call it that, but the people they know. You know, being in a small town, especially a town like Connor or Splendora, um, business is always word of mouth. It's who you know. It's you know, getting your getting your you know you know, company name out there and people talking about you. Um, but the first thing I always tell people is digital marketing is a way to tap into the audience that you're not already reaching. So right now, you know, we have companies that are, you know, especially uh, during COVID that are doing uh, well as like a floor cleaning service, uh, you know, and, and a company like that, you have people in your network that know who you are, you know, you own a, a floor cleaning service and you do a good job at it. So someone's going to tell their friend about that. But really what we're doing with digital marketing is we're tapping into an audience that doesn't know who you are. Um, digital marketing is about building your brand online, uh, getting your social medias going, getting your website going, and really reaching out to people who don't know you exist, but are looking for your services, whether that's floor cleaning or plumbing or electricity, um, whether you're a restaurant too. I mean, uh, I think marketing is pivotal for, for any kind of new business or even existing businesses, maybe businesses that aren't seeing as much business as they used to in the past. Um, but really, digital marketing is just getting your, your brand out to an audience that doesn't know who you are yet. Um, and that's being online, being present, and really building uh, a brand. Well, let's talk about that uh, another step. And this is something I think you brought up mm -hmm. uh, where you, of course, from and I understand from your position, digital marketing trumps traditional marketing. For sure. Yeah. But don't they need to coexist? They do. Uh, for me to really get the, the biggest bang for the mm -hmm. buck or have a more effective or an effective marketing program? Yeah, and it really, honestly, and that's, that's kind of a hard question because there's so many different ways of marketing a business. And I, I would definitely say traditional marketing still works for some companies and some uh, you know markets, but not all. Uh, it really just it, it really comes down to who or, you know our, my client is or who I'm talking to and what they do. Um, but I think if you're in something like, you know, the restaurant or maybe even legal, which I, which I worked in 
that space. Um, if you're going to do marketing as a whole, you really have to have an overall strategy of, you know, this is my digital marketing, this is my physical marketing. Uh, it's what I call physical marketing because it's marketing that's out there. It's not something that's on your phone or anything like that. Um, and really, have, you have to run those things cohesively, but they also always have to speak the same message. And I think that's where a lot of companies get lost is they have um, they have so many different ways that they're trying to market because uh, a lot of these small business owners um, are just kind of using the shotgun approach of doing a lot of things and hoping to get a return, you know. And so they're doing the, the billboard, they're doing the, the newspaper ad, they're doing the social media, they're doing online advertising, but it's all speaking different messages. Um, so your marketing is kind of just all over the place instead of running one cohesive message. Um, and so, I, I, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I definitely am a firm believer, obviously, working in digital marketing, that it's it trumps physical marketing um, or traditional marketing. But I, I, if you're doing both, I definitely think it's something that you have to run in tandem. And that really takes an experienced marketer. Um, to build a plan, um, to build a voice, and, and really run that cohesively and in tandem together. Well, you know, to me, the biggest sin in small business marketing mm -hmm. is the small business owner tends to look for the cheapest advertising. Mm -hmm. So the tr selection is not made on who's going to read this right. or how, even the message. Right. It's it's what's the cheapest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, to me, that's just like opening the window and throwing money at it. Yeah. And then it's funny that you say that because, um, and one thing I've, I've really come to realize, especially now working with so many different companies, is that traditional marketing is not cheap. The billboards are expensive, uh, magazine advertising are expensive. And I think it's. I think it's funny because I feel like a lot of these billboard companies and magazine companies realize that, like, the top, the, the, the clock's ticking for them, you know? So I don't know if they're just trying to shoot their, and I do, I have a, I have a personal uh, problem with these companies that I feel like take advantage of small business owners. They find these people that are struggling and they need help and they're trying to grow their business and they try to provide a solution to them at a really marked up cost. Um, and I think, and I think it's, it's bad because I see all these companies that I run into personally that are spending significant amounts of money on, you know, traditional advertising that's not working. Um, it's getting them very few leads. It's getting them small, it's like very little amounts of business, um, but they're spending, you know, arm and a leg for it. And it's really running them into the ground. But we come to them with a solution of digital marketing, which uh, is proven to be cheaper over time and provide a higher ROI, higher conversions. And you're bringing your 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 brand to a bigger audience as well. You're so limited when it comes to digital marketing because at the end of the day, it's just local marketing. You're just marketing to the people in your area. So, yeah, it it's it's always had this visual of people taking untold millions of dollars on the big scheme and just mm -hmm. light a match to it. Exactly. I mean, all through my career, mm -hmm. it's what I came to understand because I was blessed early in my career to be responsible for advertising for a very sizable retail service company. And I saw how money really got spent. And there were a lot of transactions. Of course, back then it was all tr what you call traditional. Mm -hmm. But I, I learned about it. And as I went through and had my own businesses and we did Boy, I tell you, you just it always had that visual of a stack of money just burning up yep. and producing nothing but a little bit of heat mm -hmm. and a pile of ash. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, literally. And it's funny you say that because I really feel like a lot of small business owners still have that mindset of like marketing is just sometimes a waste. Um, and if and if they're not seeing it for themselves, like their eyes, and you know, a lot of small business owners, what what they do is what they do. So, you know, if they're a plumber, if they're an electrician, if they're a lawyer, that's what they do. They don't take the time to understand marketing and what that is and how that works and how it benefits them. You know, so a lot of I think people that I come in contact with every day and have worked with in the past see marketing as a as a, it's a waste of money. Uh, and, you know, unless they're seeing that actual result of that, you know, that new client or that new sale um, to them, it's just like, what are we doing? And so that's kind of one thing that we really take pride in at Tiny Giant is we give all of our uh, clients a full analytical dashboard. We give them everything so they know exactly where their money is going, how it's being spent. Um, and they can see that for themselves. It's not something we're trying to be like, oh, this is working. No, we can show you that you're getting these these leads, these sales. These people are coming to you from the money that you're spending with us. Right. So well, that makes and, sense. And that's important. I mean, it's, it's just a I feel like a lot of marketing companies get away with just getting a client and not really showing them their ROI or their results. They're right. just they're just it's just another customer to them. It's not really a client. It's not someone that they're working with. We're working hand in hand with our clients to make sure that they're seeing the, the results and they're seeing, you know, they don't have that mindset of they're just wasting money every month. You know, it's funny you mentioned that digital dashboard when I was in the marketing and working in a retail service business. We had our own dashboard. It was a. Uh, notebook that had <laughs> yep. a count on how many coupons came in every yep. day. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was our 
trying to determine our ROI, so to speak. Yep. Well, believe it or not, we're to our first break. Uh, Brett, I appreciate it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our first break in today's show. When we come back, we're going to shift now and start talking about market strategy, building your brand, some practical things that I hope that will help you uh, if you want to get started in really marketing a business. So please stay with us, and we'll be right back with you. business on the weekly business hour every Monday at 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio, broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. God's Garage is a 501c3 that repairs and gives away cars for free to single moms, widows, and wives of deployed military. You can help God's Garage by donating a vehicle, volunteering your time, or by monetary donation. God's Garage is located at 2106 East Davis, Conroe. If you'd like to learn more about God's Garage, visit our website at godsgarage.org. Or you can contact us, and we would be glad to come and make a presentation to your group. The COVID pandemic has caused major shifts in business ownership and employment status. Linda Ballesteros can provide new opportunities for employees, employers, business owners, and entrepreneurs. Linda leverages her 30-plus year career in banking to provide franchising opportunities to those seeking to succeed in a post-COVID world. Contact 832-640-4922 or email Linda at mpowerfranchiseconsulting.com. That's Linda at the letter M, powerfranchiseconsulting.com. Hey, y'all. It's DJ Mike from Dan Simon, Texas. Join me Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. as I count down the top 10 Texas Red Dirt songs that are packing the dance floor. I'll be featuring local artists and the story behind the hits, shows in the area, as well as new songs that make you want to dance. It's Dance Simon, Texas with DJ Mike on Lone Star Community Radio, 104.5 KCZW and 106.1 KZCC, Conroe, Texas, or online, IRLoneStar.com. Not sure who to turn to when you have a problem in your business? Listen to the Weekly Business Hour on Lone Star Community Radio. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour. I'm Rick Schisler. I'm your host. And we've been having what I think is a very valuable conversation with Brett Rodriguez. Brett is with the Tiny Giant. I love that dichotomy there. Tiny Giant Web Solution Company. Wonderful company based here in Conroe, Texas, that helps people not only design websites, but also to market their business. Well, you know, Brett, when we went to the break, uh, we kind of got down into digital marketing, defining it, traditional marketing. We've covered the background. Now let's jump into the, the main event, so to speak. Marketing strategy, finding your marketing strategy. Teach us how we can do that in, what, 100 words or less, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a real golden question. And, uh, I mean, it'd be really hard to, to put that down into, like, this is how you do it because there's so many different avenues. And really, it comes down to a few different things. It comes down to, you know, what are you trying to achieve? What's, what's your vision? And it's something I always talk to my clients about. So the first thing I ask them, I'm like, what, what's your dream? Like, what are, what are you shooting for? When you go to work every day, what is it that you're wanting? You know, are you wanting more sales? Are you wanting more clients? Are you just wanting your brand to be bigger? Are you wanting people to know who you are? Um, and really, once you get those questions down, then you can really start to define what marketing strategy you want to approach. Um, and for a lot of businesses, obviously, it's more sales. You know, it's, we, want to, we want more sales. We want more business. Um, and really that comes down to, you know, well, what do you do, you know, and if uh, for, for just an example, just for the sake of the uh, what we're talking about, 
um, electricians. I mean, that's such a saturated market. There's so many electricians, so many uh, contractors, people that do that business, uh, and really defining that marketing strategy. Strategy is, you know, which way do we want to go? Do we want to go the online? Do we want to go the the social media route of, you know, people are on Facebook constantly? Are we going to put your brand in front of people that are on Facebook? You know, middle-aged people that are looking for an electrician. Maybe they're looking for a contractor. They're trying to remodel a project. Um, and we, we, we choose an avenue and we go with it. For Tiny Giant, a lot of our clients, uh, we really suggest online um, advertising. So Google ads, and I'm sure you've seen those. Any, ever, anyone listening right now has seen a Google ad. Anytime you go uh, online, you're going to search you know, electrician or contractor. Um, and the first three things you see is going to be an advertising, an advertisement. And so a lot of our clients, we always suggest, you know, first, let's get you a website. Let's make sure that you are established, you know, and that's one of the big things is a lot of clients will just hire this company to build them this website that's, you know, not SEO optimized, it's not uh, built correctly, it's got so many errors on it, and then they just put it on that website and they're like, why, or they're putting it on, online and they're like, why am I not getting any business? You know, I have a Facebook, why am I not getting any business? It's So we always suggest to them, you know, let's get everything cleaned up. Let's make sure that your, your website's running well, that you're optimized, and that your social media is cohesive, uh, it's saying the same thing, and really define their voice for them. Um, and then from there, we go into the strategy of, well, let, let's figure out what mar- works for you marketing-wise. So let's let's do some Google ads. Let's get your business out there. Let's try to build a funnel to get more clients in for you. And I'm saying all of this to say, like, there's there's different ways to go about your marketing strategy. Um, but there, when it comes to something like sales, uh, you know, Google Google's the place to be. And everyone's going to say that. You know, any any marketer you come to, they're going to be like, you know, let's work on your SEO, let's work on your website, and then let's let's get you on Google. Let's get you where people are at. Let's put your advertisements in front of people, and that's going to be you know Google ads. That's going to be Facebook ads, Instagram. I mean, we're we're so saturated with so many ads nowadays. Um, you're seeing it all, all over the place. So really, it's it's about defining what you want to do as a company um, and and finding the avenues that are effective for you. And it may may take different different. Uh, test of different things. You might have to run some Google ads and, and maybe that doesn't work for you. Maybe Facebook's the space that you work well in. Maybe Instagram is. Maybe LinkedIn. A lot of B2B business, we're seeing that, uh, you know, Facebook's not the place to be. It's LinkedIn. And, you know, if you're uh, a consultant trying to get new business from other businesses, like it's, I think that's what you said you did because I'm consulting for small businesses or, yes. or a mentor. Um, you know, LinkedIn's the place to be to, to get uh, those, those type of clients. It was really about defining your audience uh, at the end of the day is where's your audience at and where can we put your brand in front of them so they convert to a client or a sale? Well, let me ask you, I want to make sure I understand because, boy, that was a mouthful for yeah. sure, right? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, no, but yeah. no, I'm not. It's just you did cover it. I think you mm-hmm. covered it well. But to, to back up for a minute, the beginning of a strategy, just talk about the beginning for a second. Mm-hmm. It is the website. Is that correct? You've got to have a website that is quote unquote working. Yeah. And I mean, at the end, yeah, for sure. And I think anytime any of us are looking for a service or a business or anything like that, it's the first thing you go to. I mean, it's a, you're either on social media um, looking for something, you're on Google Maps. But the first thing you're going to go to is if you're considering using a service is their website. You're going to see, you know, what does a serv- service look like? What are they about? What the reviews look like um, and it starts at the website if you go if you're wanting an electrician and you go online you type an electrician come across this like really broken page that doesn't look good I don't think you're gonna want to hire that person to come into your house and fix your like like your electrical wiring or anything like that because it doesn't look good on the front so I, 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 yeah, I would agree with you it, it, it is I think the the first step in having a solid brand is your website well let's talk about branding uh, that's a great segue into it branding uh, I, I have friends of mine who are Silver Fox Advisor, very mm-hmm. successful business people. And uh, some of them that work more in the marketing area, they think branding, the word, the idea is over, overblown. Really? Uh, it's interesting. That I is mean, interesting. Now, these are folks that have been around for some time mm-hmm. and been through the trenches in yeah. different businesses and had a lot of success in mm-hmm. most cases. But branding, why is that so important to me as a small business owner? I think uh, your brand is just who you are. I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's when people think of, you know, whether it's your restaurant or your service business, like they're they're going to think of a certain thing. And I guess the first, it's the first person that comes to mind because I've been in legal marketing for, for the past, you know, few years, like 
Um, Jim Adler, like Jim Adler's brand is probably one of the best brands I've seen uh, when it comes to a lot of different marketing. He has defined his brand and everyone knows he's the Texas hammer. Like people that don't even really know what that means or what he does, because uh, a lot of people, as you know, don't really even know what plaintiff's attorneys do, you know. Um, but I think your brand's so important because at the end of the day, it's what people know you by. It's, you know, who who is that company? What are they about? What do they do? You know, and a lot of times your brand is what people are saying about you. You know, are you, are you good at electrician? Are you a good lawyer? Are you good at, you know, what you do? Do you provide quality service? Um, and I just think it's so important. I mean, you, you want to have a solid brand behind you because your brand is who you are. It's what people know you by. Well, and I think one of the things folks have a hard time, uh, at least in my uh, experience, in defining what they want their brand to be. In other mm -hmm. words, you talk about branding and the examples you're giving are about are all our businesses that really to me are based on quality and and all those kind of things where there's a huge part of the market that's driven by price. For sure. Uh, when I talked about earlier, the small business mm -hmm. guys were looking for some advertising. Well, it's, what's the price? How cheap can I get? Whatever it is. Exactly. And yeah. uh, so there is a market of, and, and you can still brand yourself as the cheapest, mm -hmm. uh, you know, type person out there offering the products or services for sure and I think people need to understand it but I think the key thing in so many of the folks I've worked with over the years never define who they are mm -hmm. they one either try to be everything to everybody yep. and that's a recipe for disaster I've experienced that myself uh, and especially as we move forward in these real defining times the digital what's your advice to someone though about how to determine what it is that they want to be, that their brand needs, you know, whatever they're going to, it's, it's up to them. They're the owner. Sure. How can I, uh, how can I go about that? Yeah. And I think it comes down to three really key things that you as a business owner should really think about. It's, uh, and I'll, I'll just say them real quickly and then kind of go over them. But the three things I really tell people, um, that are starting new business that are, you know, asking about, you know, how do I start this brand? How do I get this marketing going is, First, we have to find your purpose. What what purpose do you bring to the market that you're serving? Um, you know, what need do you help people with? What value do you bring to this market? Um, and I think that's the mo the first and most important part is you know defining what that is, um, writing it down, putting it down. This is this is the purpose that I serve in this market, and this is what I want to do. Um, secondly, I think it's about research, researching who your competitors are, what they're doing, what people are doing well, what people are doing badly, um, and really you know figure out how this market. works works and how you can compete in that and become competitive. And then thirdly, um, just really getting into the strategy of everything. And um, so purpose, sorry, I had, I had some notes here. Um, hey, your voice, sorry. Um, so finding your purpose, researching your competition, and then really defining your voice. Who are you as a company and keeping that consistent? Like I said that earlier, um, a lot of companies take the shotgun approach of doing different types of marketing um, and none of it really runs cohesively together. Uh, it's, you know, they have this you know, billboard that says one thing, they have this newspaper ad that says something, um, they have signs up that are speaking different languages, you know, different, di not, not actual languages, but just different right. uh, messages, um, but really defining your voice and who you are in that market. And this is, you know, and like, you know, bringing up some people that, you know, do marketing well. Um, you know, like uh, ABC, I know they do like pest, uh, the pest, uh, pest, pest control, pest control, pool, stuff like that. Maintenance yeah. on and on um, and on. You're really just finding your voice in the market and, and really going in for that <coughs> and building that voice, you know? And I think those are like the three things that are, that are really important is, you know, your purpose, finding your competition, who that is, what your market looks like. If you don't know your market, it's going to be really hard to compete and grow your brand. Um, but once you know your market, you know your purpose, know your market and know your voice from there, it's just work. It's just work. I mean, you're, you're, you're posting content you're building up your, your brand, you're building up your website, um, and really just putting the time into building who you are, uh, getting those reviews, you know, getting the, doing well at what you do, um, and really just building that up. Well, I think you've, you've nailed it. Uh, those are the th three of the most important things you can do in, uh, in putting a marketing strategy together, no mm -hmm. doubt about it. Well, believe it or not, we're at the bottom of the hour. I need to take a break. Would you have a few minutes to stick around? For sure. Come back after the break? Because I want to get in a couple nuts and bolts, yeah, uh, sure. particularly about, you know, what is the, the best, single best digital marketing tool out there. Okay. Talk a little bit about LinkedIn because you mentioned business to business. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you don't mind, For sure. if sit through the break. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our bottom of the hour break and we come back. Brett's going to be with us. We're going to kind of drill down into a couple tools, kind of a nuts and bolts thing. I think it's great to so you get a sense of 
where you have to go once you do all those things and build a strategy. Uh, so you can make a decision, are you going to do it yourself? Uh, or are you going to get your cousin to do it? Or are you going to reach out to somebody like the folks at Tiny Giant Web Solutions? So please stay with us and we'll be right back to you. It's all about business on the Weekly Business Hour every Monday at 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio. A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647 3776 to take your first step into the radio world. The COVID pandemic has caused major shifts in business ownership and employment status. Linda Ballesteros can provide new opportunities for employees, employers, business owners, and entrepreneurs. Linda leverages her 30 plus year career in banking to provide franchising opportunities to those seeking to succeed in a post COVID world. Contact 832 832- 640-4922 or email Linda at mpowerfranchiseconsulting.com. That's Linda at the letter M, powerfranchiseconsulting.com. This is Rick TRC. Every Tuesday on my show, Afternoons with Lone Star from 3 to 7, I play back-to-back classic rock hits. That's right. I like to call it a two for Tuesday or a three for whatever it is you'd like. Call the request line, 936-647-3776, or message me on Facebook, Afternoons with Lone Star, make a music request. That's right, you can do it. Here's what else. Go over to our website, IRLoneStar.com. Get the app on your phone. It's easy. You'll like it. We have the safest food supply in the world. Strict laws and regulations restrict the usage of hormones, antibiotics, and pesticides within our food supply. Production agriculture practices and technologies such as the use of GMOs, which is not any more or less risky than conventional crop production, has allowed American farmers to produce more food on less acres in environmentally sound ways. Find out more online at pathtoplate.tamu.edu. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make lives better. Business talk on the weekly business hour every Monday at 11 a.m. right here on Lone Star Community Radio. Well, you're listening to the weekly business hour. We just completed our bottom of the hour break and welcome back. We're continuing, we're holding over, so to speak, continuing our conversation with Brett Rodriguez. Brett is the digital marketing manager. Got that one right, yep, didn't I? Yep. All these titles float around, and I kind of <laughs> I lo- lose track of them. But Brad is uh, works with Tiny Giant Web Solutions. We've been talking about digital marketing, and I asked him to stay over for an extra segment or so and talk a little more specifically about some nuts and bolts. But before I do, I have some exciting news, and I apologize. I failed to bring it up at the beginning of the show, but I uh, because I was remiss then, I don't want to miss it again. We have a new sponsor here at the Weekly Business Hour, and it's M, that's the capital M, Power Franchise Consulting. Uh, If you've recently been downsized due to the pandemic, maybe now is the time to revisit your dream of owning your own business. I've seen a lot of that going on, quite frankly. Linda Ballesteros leverages her 30-plus year career in banking to help clients become business owners through franchising. She helps you find the right franchise for you and your family. So I would encourage you, reach out to Linda at Linda at M, capital M, Power, Franchise Consulting.com or give her a call, 832-640-4922. Thank you, Linda, for joining us as a sponsor. And again, if you're thinking about a change and thinking about owning a business, which a vast majority of people apparently do, this may be the time to check it out. And I encourage you to check Linda out. She may be able to help you to find the right place for you and your family in a business of your own. Well, Brett, um, let's get into a little nuts and bolts. And again, thank you for staying over with us. Um, 
in your opinion, and this is a really broad question, okay? Mm -hmm. What is the single best digital marketing resource uh, for small businesses in general? Um, I think the first thing I can say is social media. I think social media is easily the the strongest tool. I've, I've seen companies, massive companies grow just from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Um, social media is where people are at. I mean, everyone's using it. It's uh, the biggest, I mean, biggest consumer base that you're going to find and you're going to be able to you know, put your brand in front of. Um, you know, and I think it's very underutilized by a lot of small businesses, ironically, um, because it, it is so, such, a, such a saturated place, but it is a very valuable tool. Well, you know, in social media, obviously, as you mentioned, four or five of the different specific tools that mm-hmm. are classified as social media. Uh, but one that we touched on very briefly in a previous conversation today was LinkedIn, mm-hmm. which is it advertises itself as a business to business primarily type mm-hmm. connection. It's also a giant networking. Yeah. Uh, it's also where folks that are looking for a job or a change in a career go. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see a lot of that. People even try to hire me. It's very interesting uh, because I'm posted there. But talk about LinkedIn. I mean, how and or why and how would my small business want to use LinkedIn yeah. to market my business? And I think it, it, again, it comes down to defining what where your audience is at. I don't suggest LinkedIn for every small business. You know, I'm not going to tell I don't I'm not going to tell a restaurant to go onto LinkedIn because that's not where their business is. But for someone like you, that's a consultant um, and a mentor to small business owners, I think it's a great place to be. It's a great place to establish authority in what you do. You know, and saying that this is what I do. I help small small business owners grow in their trade. You know, and help them grow their business it's a place to go to grow your network and then also grow your authority in posting like good content and i see a lot of people do it very successful a lot of consultants specifically um, that post just very valuable content whether it's you know inspirational educational um, it's a good place to go and just show that you know this is what i do and i'm good at what i do and i think if anything it kind of it's kind of a bragging board for a lot of companies uh and what they do you know and Uh, just establishing that presence. And I think it's a great place to connect with other businesses as well. Well, and to me, that's kind of the networking aspect. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, they offer advertising, paid advertising. They do, yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Um, It's effective, you know, for for companies that are really trying to do B2B. Um, I know a lot of, you know, again, consultants, you know, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, I would say, like accountants and stuff like that that are trying to, uh, investment bankers, I'd say, is another big one that I've seen on LinkedIn. Um, and I think, I think it's good. I think if you really know who your audience is, where they're at and what they're doing, you can target that audience and, and really get your advertising in front of them. Um, like I said, I don't, I, it's not something I suggest for a lot, every, every business, but I do think for the niche market specifically, LinkedIn's a great place to be. Well, let me ask you, you mentioned earlier in the conversation that, uh, one of the things that you all do at, at Tiny Giant is you give people a dashboard. Mm-hmm. Some of our listeners might not know what that is, but uh, it's a measurement tool that mm-hmm. brings information, and you might touch on that as w- in your answer. But how do you measure the results of a digital marketing campaign? I mean, other than you get numbers, yeah. you know, this many people open the email, right? Mm-hmm. Go back to the old email days, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so on and so forth. Kind of walk us through that in a general sense, yeah, please. No, yeah, you kind of touched on a little bit as like you know, open rates is a big thing, especially when it comes to email marketing. Um, there's a lot of different avenues. So you have your, you, you obviously you have your social media component, you have your Google component, and then you have your website. You know, and we measure all of it. So we we have our social media dashboard, we have your Google Ads dashboard, your website dashboard, and basically the way we measure it is you know how many people are we getting. Your, your brand or your message in front of and how many of those people are converting into sales and customers so you have your impressions you know so a certain campaign whether we did Facebook ads or Google ads may get you know 10,000 impressions um, and then from there we would see how many people clicked onto that and then how many people converted so it's kind of a it's kind of a chain of you know you know how many people saw it how many people clicked on it and then how many people converted um, so your impressions your clicks and then your conversion rate importantly at the most importantly at the end of the day your conversion rate is everything your click-through rate can be high but not have a high conversion rate, which a conversion rate is when someone turns in from a lead to a customer or a client or whatever. Um, and so those are the three things that we really look at is, you know, are a lot of people seeing it? Are a lot of people clicking on it? And then who's converting into sales or leads or, or clients or stuff like that? And so I would definitely say those are like the three main components that we measure. Okay. Well, you know, that leads me to a question I personally always have and clients typically when we go into digital marketing, we're going through their marketing strategy as part of what I offer. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and and I was was kidding, but I wasn't back in the day 
we counted coupons, right? Yeah. The number of coupons mm-hmm. that were redeemed, and then we got into you know how much and what item, and got further and further into it. Uh, so we did start to try to track and understand where the money was being spent. Uh, and I learned a lot of things when you do that. And it's so important, the accountability and measurement. But one thing that's bothered me about digital marketing, uh, and, I, and it bothers a lot of small business people in my experience, is they seem to feel it's kind of, and I'll use the word voodoo, they don't really understand it, right? Yeah. So when they talk about accountability, okay, where's my coupon to count or where's this what would you say to someone as far as okay, you spend a th- and I'll just pull a figure, a hundred dollars with us, mm-hmm. or a thousand, or ten thousand, whatever the mm-hmm. number is, and this is the kind of return that we expect. Now, I've never had an advertising company promise me X dollars in sales, mm-hmm. but in this case, you can measure things pretty accurately. For sure. Do you subscribe to the idea that you will tell people? what the expectation, a minimal expectation would be? Or and, yeah. How do you handle that question? And it's funny because I feel like a lot of the times we get people that come to us from people that did that and they promised them a figure. They promised them this many amount of leads and it's not something I, I subscribe to, uh, especially when I'm you know doing sales or talking to a new client. Um, I really tell people, what is your, what's your potential ROI? You know, so let's, let's talk about, you know, in legal space, you know, um, yeah, uh, an, a potential client can be anywhere from, you know, $50,000 to, you know, six figures, you know, and so with, you know, a sale, maybe like an electrician, you know, a job can be anywhere from a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars, you know, so it's really about defining what your ROI is and what we're going to target, you know, so specifically, you know, what kind of, uh, what kind of sale or lead are we going after? Um, and really defining what your ROI is. And then we have potential ROI. So ROI is your return on investment. So how much money you're spending on this campaign and what is going to be your potential ROI? Ideally, our goal, um, you know, is, and always is to be positive in the ROI. So we want you obviously to make more than what you're investing. So if you invest $1,000, we want you to make $10,000 off that. And that's always going to be our goal as a significant ROI. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're spending money and you're not getting over what you invested, then you're in a negative ROI and you d- need to go away from that marketing company. Well, it makes a lot of sense. And again, that's uh, so many small businesses, particularly, and I'm sure larger businesses the same, mm-hmm. have expectations. They're used to managing their expenses yep. and then it, it's a very difficult thing for people to understand and to accept mm-hmm. what i like about digital marketing versus traditional though is that you can begin to get a sense of what's working and not working exactly. plus you can do some a b testing you can mm-hmm. you can play with it a lot yep. easier and a lot less expensive mm-hmm. than you can traditional yeah. advertising and so on and so forth and a lot of the small business owners i mean they all have the same mindset it's just you know show me the money you know and if we can show you the money we're doing a successful job and and i think that's the biggest thing that a lot of people appreciate about appreciate about us specifically is we're very transparent i mean i'm not trying to convince anybody to give me their money you know just to have their money i'm, I'm like you know give us your 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 budget and we're going to help you grow your business and we're going to show you that we're helping you grow your business you know and some things take time not everything works out right away um but it's about optimizing finding your strategy that works and being flexible the the market's always changing the trends change you know people change consumers change the way people see stuff is constantly shifting and you really have to be adaptable as a marketing company you have to stay up to date with uh, where google's at you know where social media at, and really you know help your clients navigate that that's why we're experts in what we do you know is because we stay up to date and we stay educated well and that's what you got to do you mentioned that i don't want to we're kind of running out of time now, mm-hmm. but the education to me and the technology that a marketing firm like Tiny Giant brings, mm-hmm. that's one of the things I evaluate mm-hmm. when I'm, a client has asked me to look at what they're mm-hmm. thinking about doing with a company or For a sure. group of companies mm-hmm. is how much are they really keeping up with the trends, mm-hmm. things happening, new tools, this, that, because mm-hmm. that changes Oh, in a sure. blink of an eye. Every That's day. my impression. Yeah, Google is constantly changing everything. They're always updating their algorithms. Social media is doing the same thing. You just have to really stay up to date and stay in the, and stay in the know. Yeah, got to do that. Got to be smart people. Mm-hmm. Well, Brett, I can't thank you enough. You've sure. brought us a lot of information. And to our listeners, I hope you've picked up. Uh, if someone wanted to continue this conversation with you, What's the best way for them to do that? Um, you can reach us at uh, tinygiantwebsolutions.com. Uh, all of our contact information on there. Shoot us an email. Um, you can you know, shoot me an email. It's brodriguez uh, with a Z at tinygiantwebsolutions.com. Again, thank you so much. Well, sure, ladies and gentlemen, you. we're going to take our final break. 
And when we come back, I'm going to deliver to you uh, what I call my one best consult tip of the week. It's entitled Finding the Best Employees Now. So please stay with us and we'll be right back with you. For business ideas and news you can use, join us on the weekly business hour every Monday at 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio. Health Center Southeast Texas is a federally qualified health center. We accept Medicare, Medicaid, and most major private insurances. For our self-pay patients, we have a sliding scale discount program available. Our health centers have qualified providers and staff striving every day to provide the best quality of care to our patients. Services offered are family medicine, behavioral health services, telepsychiatry, and pediatrics. We have four area locations. Look at the Health Center Southeast Texas online at hcset.com. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show. With monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936-647-3776. The COVID pandemic has caused major shifts in business ownership and employment status. Linda Ballesteros can provide new opportunities for employees, employers, business owners, and entrepreneurs. Linda leverages her 30-plus year career in banking to provide franchising opportunities to those seeking to succeed in a post-COVID world. Contact 832-640-4922 or email Linda at mpowerfranchiseconsulting.com. That's Linda at the letter M, powerfranchiseconsulting.com. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. It's all business talk on the weekly business hour every Monday at 11 a.m. right here on Lone Star Community Radio. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is our final segment today of the weekly business hour. And again, thank you for listening to us. I really enjoyed that conversation with Brett Rodriguez. Lots and lots of information, lots of questions still. Uh, Marketing, marketing strategy, digital marketing, uh, right, wrong, or indifferent. These are subjects that you, as a small business owner, need to embrace. You need to understand them and either connect with someone like Brett and Tiny Giant Web Solutions or find somebody to assist you uh, because this world changes, just as Brett said every day. To me, it's almost like every time I blink, it changes. But it's so important, in my opinion, going forward because marketing is always more important than the typical small business owner really will give credibility to it. And uh, you need to pay attention. I encourage you to do that. And again, if you're listening to the show, you've got a question about the show, you've got a a comment about it, or you just have a business question about your business, you can always drop me a line at one, that's the number one, bestconsult at gmail.com. That's one bestconsult at gmail.com. Also want to, again, recognize our sponsor, a new sponsor today. Uh, It's Empower Franchise Consulting, uh, Linda Ballastoris. It's her company. She does a wonderful job in guiding people through the franchise process. And quite frankly, if you've been recently downsized out of a job, so many people out there looking for a new opportunity, and so many, I find, have thought about going in business for themselves, well, franchising may be the way for you to do that. So I would encourage you, contact Linda Ballastor. She's got over 30 years in the banking world, making loans to small businesses, working with small businesses, and she can help you become a business owner through franchising. You want to reach her? Just send an email to Linda at M Power. That's a capital M P O W E R, franchiseconsulting.com, empowerfranchiseconsulting.com, or call 832 640 4922. 
Well, let me give it to my one best consult tip of the week. Uh, we've got a few minutes left, and one of the things, that, uh, thank goodness, that I'm beginning to hear is people are having trouble, at least in the Montgomery County area of Texas, in finding employees, uh, finding good employees. I think you can always find that warm body. But to find a good employee is becoming a difficult task. And that's amazing to me because our unemployment rate here in the county is still a little over 8%. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting challenge. But I personally believe, and I've said it on the show many years ago, that finding good people is always a challenge. And I think it's, it's difficult right now because always good people will find a job. So when you have something happen, for example, like the, the COVID virus and companies downsize and good people get let go, they are able to scramble and find a new position, a new connection. I mean, same thing happened with Brett Rodriguez, who was just on the line. He was working for a company for a couple of years. The downsizing happened because they what happened with COVID, their business dropped off so much, and he was able to scramble and find a new employer, even in the middle of the pandemic. So there are always opportunities out there. And I think one of the reasons it's difficult, even with eight plus percent unemployment, is that good people find positions. And I guess my next point is, has your business adapted to this? To me, this is another one of a long list of wake up calls over the years that businesses need to put in place a process procedure to find and always be looking for new employees, always looking for that good one. And it takes time, it takes effort, but even if you're a small firm with a handful of employees, you need to dedicate a certain amount of resources to making that happen. And to me, there are three steps that you need to do every day, every month, every year. First is make your place of business, whatever your business is, online, brick and mortar on Main Street, building things, products, shipping them to other people, or electrician, plumber, make it the best place for someone to work. That means working with your employees, your current environment, within the walls of your building, if you have a building. But the idea is you want to portray to people, this is a really great place to work. I know people uh, have worked with clients who win these awards, like in the greater Houston area for the best place to work and so on and so forth, they put a lot of effort to win those awards. And I think it's wonderful. But what they're trying to do is advertise, hey, we're a great place to work. And let me assure you, when you talk to them, they have attracted, among other things, attracted some really great people that approach their business, even if they don't have an opening, wanting to get more information about working for their firm. So Make your business a great place to work. A uh, lot of moving parts to that, but it's a given, in my opinion, regardless of you're trying to hire more people, you still need to strive to be a great place for people to work. Second thing is, and most importantly, and this is where people that I've worked with have a little bit of difficulty, you need to always be searching, always looking for new people, at least once a month, even if you don't need anyone and you don't foresee needing anyone, you need to cast your net, as a mentor once told me, and see what's out there. See what may be interested in your company or in particular positions, even if you don't have an opening that day. And people always want to respond, well, if I go through that effort and I find somebody, well, let me assure you, every organization has someone on top and there's someone on the bottom. And you may be in a situation where you have someone on the bottom that you really need to let go. They just don't fit in your position. And that's when it comes into play. But I assure you, if you're trying to build a business and be the best in your market, you definitely want to find the best people. And when you find somebody, you got to figure out how can I utilize them? What can I do? The idea is that also you develop the habit of doing this on a regular basis. So it's very, very important to commit to once a month, have a process, a procedure, just like sending out invoices that you go through and try to attract. And third is you need to do everything you can, obviously, to motivate your employees, but put some of those motivation tools to work and having them refer. Experience tells us, uh, statistics tell us, 
typically the best employees come from being referred into the business by another employee. So you want to have incentives and motivation, takes many forms, to have your employees be a great voice for a great place to work, right? So that's what you need to do. Best place to work in your area, always searching, always ears open for a new potential employee and motivating your own employees on a regular basis to bring good people into your firm. Measure your progress, reward, and somebody told me the other day, I thought it was great, we have an open house every day. They run their business like they're running an open house every day. They want people to be motivated that work there, turn out their best work product, and also to attract new people. Well, ladies and gentlemen, make a note on your calendar. We're going to be back here next Monday. I hope you'll join us at 11 o'clock right here on IRLoneStar.com or on Conroe FM 106.1 104.5. And look for a podcast and a video cast of today's program, the Weekly Business Hour page at IRLoneStar.com or on Facebook later in the week. And again, remember, stay in touch with what's happening in Montgomery County right here on the Lone Star Community Radio. And until next week, as I always tell everyone, stay engaged, keep your focus on what is important in your business. Thanks. Today's show was recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and all rights and ownership are reserved to Lone Star Community Radio. For more information regarding this program and Lone Star Community Radio, visit us online at IRLoneStar.com. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, serving the community with local programming on TV, radio, and online. If you enjoyed today's program, please support us by sponsorship or starting your own show. Contact us today by phone or text at 936-666-1084 or email the station at lscrstudios at gmail.com.